It's a very powerful experience, you know, as a, as a woman, you know, this whole ability to give life to somebody else is extremely powerful. One thing that Pam and I both noticed when we were going through, um, before we even had children, we were going through medical school, was how uh, pregnancy and birth were treated more like a disease. A medicated birth was just something that I thought was normal. I thought you go to the hospital and you get whatever pain medication you need because everybody I knew did that. With my first birth, it was a hospital birth and I got an epidural so I wouldn't have to go through that painful experience. I had a girlfriend who, oh, I was in the hospital and it was great, I didn't feel a thing and I watched TV the whole time, I had the remote in my hand. Uh, I didn't want to be watching TV while my baby was being born. I wanted to be there while my baby was being born. What we wanted was to avoid any and all interventions, minimize the interventions, because every intervention brings risks. So many of my friends, so many women go, th you know, they always say, oh, you got to do the drugs, you know, what, you're crazy not to do the drugs. but. To go through a natural birth is so empowering. When we finally had our first son, we really had to fight them to do what we wanted, you know, for our for our birth. It was our baby, you know. And you have to take your clothes off and put on a gown, which makes it would make anybody feel intimidated. Put the mom on this monitor, watch the monitor, which has a continuous heartbeat sound. No, you can't get up and walk around. A lot of different nurses changing shift at the hospital. Then you got people coming and checking on you who you don't know. You may not even get the doctor that you've been consulting with the day you deliver. Put the patients on drugs to help the delivery. I'm on drugs. I've got this thing in my spine. And then the whole thing stalled at that point. You're not progressing. The baby's not progressing. Well, there's a risk of whatever. So immediately she grabs the vacuum. Like, okay, there's the head. Pull, pull pulls the baby out. It was very disappointing. I thought that the baby was taken by force, you know, and he wasn't allowed to come naturally. I was completely oblivious of the effects of Pitocin and epidural that that has on the baby. I didn't discover that until after she came. In the hospital, procedures are necessary for things to run smoothly. Unfortunately, the procedures that they need to keep the establishment safe will prevent the progress of labor, which means then you have to do more interventions. So then one intervention usually leads to another intervention. She had no intention of having an um, epidural or having a vacuum extraction, but she, she got caught up in the snowball. It, it's, it's not her fault. Uh, I'm an anesthesiologist. I do put in a lot of epidurals, actually, and um, it's through putting in a lot of epidurals that I've had a lot of experience with pregnant women, and she didn't quite state it, but our biggest fear was having a cesarean section. The C-section rate's over 50% on my street. I think that doctors are wonderful. I think that the nurses and the staff at the hospitals have the best intentions, but when you look at the statistics... And actually, if you read the data, the read the literature, it tells you that the monitors and, and the use of epidurals have actually increased the rate of C-sections, so... Uh, C-sections are definitely not as safe as natural childbirth and they're not as safe as... They're not as safe as having a child vaginally and naturally. Women are, are not given full information about a C-section, that it's, it's abdominal surgery. And it takes a long time to, to recover from as well. It's more time consuming and labor consuming for them to help a mom get through a vaginal delivery. It's far easier and you know, lucrative to be quite honest, to take the baby, you know, through cesarean section. It's a scary thing. So with a natural childbirth, you and the baby benefit. It doesn't make it a procedure and it doesn't put it on a timetable. It just allows us to do what we know how to do. I didn't plan on having a birth at home, I just wanted a natural birth, but the more I did the research, the more I felt that it would be easier for me to remove myself out of the hospital so I wouldn't have the pressure of getting the medication and, and all that stuff, so. Really what you need if you just want someone to support you and make sure everything's safe is you need a midwife. OBGYNs, or obstetrics and gynecology, they specialize in the pathology of pregnancy and birth, meaning disease. They deal with 
uh, the diagnosis and treatment of complications. Where midwives are trained in normalcy, we take a low risk women and we keep them low risk. We keep them healthy. We teach them about how to care for themselves and for their, their growing baby. A lot of people are under the misconception also that midwives, they, they think things like, oh, they're uneducated, they don't have training, they're unprepared, they don't, what, what if there's an emergency? I had so much security because, you know, you go to a hospital and the doctor shows up when the head shows up. So you really get way more expertise if you're at home because Lori shows up when you go into, you know, labor. There's actually a labor and delivery team at her bedside while she's in labor. So we're monitoring the mother and the baby one-on-one. -on -one. Lori's staff arrive to a birth with as much equipment as a neonatal ambulance. I carry all of all the same equipment that I have at the birth center with me. I'm a mobile midwife. I'm a mobile labor and delivery ER team is how I like to think of myself. And I actually went through and checked all their safety equipment <laughs> and we made a list and sure enough they had everything that I would have needed. I felt more secure. I liked the security of knowing I'd have a trained professional and have all that equipment. And then, of course, there are doctors on call and there's hospitals local. So when she came to me and said, oh, I'm gonna have it at birthing center, I'm like, good. <laughs> the only question was, well, gee, should we have it at home or should we have it at the center? I know we had to write a birth plan out for the midwives. I think it was just like, call them when I'm ready and they come over and help me give birth. And it, that's basically what happened. It was the end of August. I was five days overdue. Well, I always try to deny that I'm in labor. I told my husband, I think the baby's coming. And my water broke, but I'll call you when things start happening. My wife seems to think she's having the baby. Get in the car! <laughs> One of the midwives lived very close to us. Her and the birth team came over at 4 o'clock. We got to the birthing center at 11. I was still walking around and talking and we're all laughing and about midnight it got a little intense and... Intense is the only word I can use. It was my first child was 9 pounds 10 ounces. He was a big baby and so there was a lot of work to do. It wasn't easy. The majority of the labor was just tightening in my back, tightening in my belly. There's definitely like big sensations involved and there's a lot going on and it's pretty intense. Tightening sensations, like a big hug. It was pain, but it was uh... The midwife was really supportive, giving me ideas. Okay, let's try lying on your side. Let's try squatting. Let's try... She just kept reminding me, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this even when I may have been through that transition part where you're doubting yourself. She would say, you are perfect. You're a perfect pregnant woman. Your baby sounds perfect. Everybody was focused on Pam. There wasn't one person there who wasn't focused on what Pam wanted or what Pam needed and what would make her feel good. And how could we help her get there, get to that moment? to have that baby. And I remember at the end when the baby started coming down, I thought, I've got to get in the water now. I mean, I just knew this was the time. So all of a sudden, it's like, Bruh! relief. And my mom was holding me, and my husband was there. And then as soon as I got in, I started having contractions one after the other. She's like, oh, you're ready to push. And then she stood up and had her baby <laughs> on her feet. There she came. Out she came. So <laughs> it was pretty exciting. It was, you know, just an hour. It was such a comforting experience to sink down in it that last hour and, and have the baby in the water was a, a blessing, you know, it was a gift. And at the end, she was right there through the very end. She just said, you're so, you're perfect, you're doing a great job, we're so proud of you, everybody in this room is proud of you, and just ended up being fantastic. I had a relationship with her. It wasn't a medical relationship. It was, you know, a human relationship that I had with her. So at 1.58 in the morning, he was born. So intense at that moment, and Crashy's head came out. And I remember Lori saying, you've got to touch his head. And I said, oh, I just don't think I can pull it together and even do that right now. And she's like, no, you've got to do it. You'll regret it if you don't. It's like one of the most profound moments of my life my firstborn child and he's inside me but he's outside and I'm touching him and it was an amazing experience and so she I feel like she really made sure I had a great experience I had these like intimate intense moments that I will always remember for my whole life and when you have those kind of memories I mean it's wonderful it's wonderful and not everybody has those kind of memories so I feel very blessed and I know we both feel very very blessed to have such a great memory for our last yeah our last birth that's for sure 
And that's why we're coming back for the second time. Mm-hmm. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> you give birth the way you live life. If you live life in your own way, then you might want to have a birth in your own way. I'm Lori Walker, and I'm a certified nurse midwife, and I'm the founder and director of South Coast Midwifery. It's a very powerful experience, you know, as a, as a woman, you know, this whole ability to give life to somebody else is extremely powerful. One thing that Pam and I both noticed when we were going through, um, before we even had children, we were going through medical school, was how uh, pregnancy and birth were treated more like a disease. A medicated birth was just something that I thought was normal. I thought you go to the hospital and you get whatever pain medication you need because everybody I knew did that. With my first birth, it was a hospital birth and I got an epidural so I wouldn't have to go through that painful experience. I had a girlfriend who, oh, I was in the hospital and it was great, I didn't feel a thing and I watched TV the whole time, I had the remote in my hand. Uh, I didn't want to be watching TV while my baby was being born. I wanted to be there while my baby was being born. What we wanted was to avoid any and all interventions, minimize the interventions because every intervention brings risks. So many of my friends, so many women go, th you know, they always say, oh, you got to do the drugs. You know what? You're crazy not to do the drugs. But to go through a natural birth is so empowering. When we finally had our first son, we really had to fight them to do what we wanted, you know, for our, for our birth. It was our baby, you know. And you have to take your clothes off and put on a gown, which makes, it would make anybody feel intimidated. Put the mom on this monitor, watch the monitor. Which has a continuous heartbeat sound. No, you can't get up and walk around. A lot of different nurses changing shift at the hospital. Then you got people coming and checking on you who you don't know. You may not even get the doctor that you've been consulting with the day you deliver. Put the patients on drugs to help the delivery. I'm on drugs, I've got this thing in my spine. And then the whole thing stalled at that point. You're not progressing, the baby's not progressing, there's a risk of whatever. So immediately she grabs the vacuum. Like, okay, there's the head, pull, pull pulls the baby out. It was very disappointing. I thought that the baby was taken by force, you know, and he wasn't allowed to come naturally. I was completely oblivious of the effects of Pitocin and epidural that that has on the baby. I didn't discover that until after she came. In the hospital, procedures are necessary for things to run smoothly. Unfortunately, the procedures that they need to keep the establishment safe will prevent the progress of labor, which means then you have to do more interventions. So then one intervention usually leads to another intervention. She had no intention of having an um, epidural or having a vacuum extraction, but she, she got caught up in the snowball. 